Hi, my name is Ali Shersava from Breacher Digital and in this short video we're going to talk about power supply and input filter interaction, stability, instability issues and Middlebrook's instability criteria. Let's say you have designed your filter and you connect it to a power supply and there are times whereby the power supply is perfectly stable but as soon as you connect the input filter the loop starts to go unstable. Uh, Professor Middlebrook did a study on this and he came up with the notion that the, in order for the input filter not to interact with the power supply's control loop, the uh, input impedance of the power supply on when operating on the closed loop conditions must be much higher than the output impedance of the of the filter. Now measuring of the output impedance of the filter is not that difficult. Measuring the input impedance of the power supply is not as straightforward. That is because um, in order for the power supply to operate, you're going to have to put some capacitance on the input and of course that is part of the filter and not part of the power, power supply. <clears throat> Luckily, we can estimate these actually quite easily. The equation for the input impedance of the power supply is the in squared times efficiency divided by output power as shown in Steve Sandler's book. And the Z out of the filter, which is a simple LC filter, Z out is equal to the square root of L over C. You can see right now that the larger the L, the bigger the Z out. And what we're trying to avoid is that this value ever gets close to that. Yeah? Now, given that the cutoff frequency of the filter is 1 over 2 pi the square root of LC, by selecting the appropriate value of C, i.e. a smaller value of L, a larger value of C, you could actually reduce Z out. And we will discuss all of these later when we design a filter. So what happens if this Z out gets close to Z in? Well, I have done a simulation. <clears throat> Here, you see the classic body plot of uh, a voltage mode power supply. This is a voltage mode buck converter. The blue trace is the loop before I have added the filter. Uh, you can also see the phase. It's all nice and beautiful, exactly like you expect. Then the red trace is a filter that I have, I have designed specifically so that at its cutoff frequency, where it resonates, uh, the, uh, the impedance of the filter starts in interacting with the impedance of the power supply. And you can clearly see the loop response crosses the 0 dB axis several times and that is a recipe for instability. You can also see from the phase, the red trace on the phase collapses at the cutoff frequency or the resonance frequency of the filter which in this case is around 7 kHz. Now if your loop is crossing the 0 dB axis several times you have to meet the stability criteria every time and that is why this causes this instability problem. Um, of course this is a simulation uh, because in real life the power supply will go unstable at this point and then you will not be able to plot it very well. However, what we are going to do is we're going to make a measurement of a real power supply and we're going to connect to it a listen uh, in order to add some impedance. A listen is effectively a filter with lots of inductance and lots of capacitance. So what happens is when we attach the listen it will interact with the loop and then we will use the body 100 in order to measure the loop and you will clearly see that the beautiful loop that we have before addition of these huge amounts of inductance will dip as soon as we connect the listen. As we suggested earlier, we were going to connect a listen uh, whilst measuring the loop and see the impact of the filter inside of the listen, the huge inductors that we have inside of the listen, uh, on the control loop. At the moment, um, I am not uh, using the listen. You can see that I've got my power supply over here, I've got the body 100, I have got the uh, injection transformer, and the power supply is being, my, my buck converter is being powered directly from the bench. Um, and here, you can see that I've got a classic look of a beautiful um, control loop. 
I have got a crossover frequency of around 10 kilohertz. I've got about 55 degrees of phase margin. You can see the resonant uh, um, double pole of the LC filter of the buck converter. This is operating in voltage mode. And you can see how nicely the phase is behaving. This is before adding uh, the listen into the equation. So as we suggested earlier on, um, when I connect the listen, let's, which is just like a filter, the um, output impedance of this uh, will become too close to the input impedance of the power supply and I expect to see a dip in the gain plot and I expect the phase to start changing. So I'm now going to disconnect it, my buck converter from the bench power supply and I'm now going to power it through the listen. So if I connect it now through the listen, you will see now, there we go. So now on this red trace, this is the resonant frequency of the LC inside of listen. You can see that the, uh, um, the loop, the gain has dipped. But look at what's happening with the phase. The phase is going wildly up and down. And that is because now Z out of this LC network is interacting with the control loop of the power supply just like uh, Professor Middlebrook suggested. Now, this is not approaching zero on purpose because otherwise it would go unstable and I could not uh, actually show you anything as the power supply would kick into a protect mode, but you can clearly see that it's dipping down and of course, if this point crosses the zero dB axis, that is when your input filter makes your power supply unstable.